everybody, this is Pitch Skull Black here, and welcome to the Skulls General Reviews number 13, in, t in which today I'm going to be taking a look so at things. Without further ado, let us begin the Skulls General Reviews episode 13 by taking a look at the cover art. So up here we have BBC, Doctor Who and the kind of IC um, 1996 TV movie uh, slash um, John Pertwee logo, Dreamstone Moon, Paul Leonard. And then for the cover art itself, in the centre we have the Dreamstone, uh, then a circle of fire uh, just outside the Dreamstone, and then like this kind of bubble of energy with all sorts of light rays uh, popping off of it, just meteors everywhere, and like some stars kind of bursting out of it. It reminds me a bit of um, the Sylvester McCoy uh, title sequence. Um, so yeah, and then on the spine we have uh, Doctor Who, uh, then a condensed bit of the cover, Dreamstone Moon, Dreamstone Moon Paul Leonard, uh, BBC, and a little um, continuation of the cover, uh, with stars and nice greeny background. Uh, then on the back, uh, set against this nice kind of greeny, kind of cloudy, um, starry kind of sky uh, type thing. Uh, we have a condensed bit of the cover art, uh, the barcode and the prices and whatnot, and uh, Dr. Natalis are trademarks to the BBC. And then for the blurb, we have Sam is on her own, but her distance from the Doctor doesn't make for a trouble free life. Rescued from an out of control spaceship, she finds herself on a tiny moon which is the only known, known source of Dreamstone, a mysterious crystalline substance that can preserve your dreams or give you nightmares. Pitched into the middle of a conflict between the mining company extracting Dreamstone and ecological protesters, Sam thinks that it's easy to decide who the good guys are until people start dying and the killers that seem to be the same species as some of her new friends. Meanwhile, the Doctor has tracked Sam down, but before he can reach her, he is co-opted by the Dreamstone Mining Company and their sinister military advisers. Suddenly it's war and the Doctor is forced to fight against what he believes in. He alone suspects that the Dreamstone is not is what it isn't what it appears to be. But nobody's listening and nobody could dream who the real enemy is. This is another indie series of adventures featuring the Eighth Doctor and Sam. Uh, Doctor Who Dreamstone Moon Paul Leonard, BBC Books. Uh, then for the inners we have what I just said. Uh, then some first copyright guff, um, acknowledgements, uh, who this book is for, uh, a prologue, and this book is split across 250 pages, across 22 chapters and a prologue. Now what is the general consensus and my own personal thoughts and opinions on Dreamstone Moon by Paul Leonard? On um, Goodreads this book has got an average rating of 3.8 out of 5 and have very kind of negative issues. There's one four star and uh, a few three stars, but mostly it's like two stars, or it's actually four four star pieces, funny enough. But most of it is just two stars, three stars, so it seems to be pretty hated, this book. But what did I think of Dreamstone Moon? Dreamstone Moon is one of those Doctor Who books where you read it when you uh, when you first read it, you think, oh, that was a great Doctor Who book, but it won't stay firmly imprinted in your memory um, for a long time, much like Dreams of Empire, um, or just trying to think of any others. Uh, Dreams of Empire is the only one I can think of off the top of my head as of now. So, <coughs> so, in, so overall, this book is kind of um, uh, a good Doctor Who book, but kind of forgettable in a way. Um, the plot is uh, very interesting with the Dreamstone Moon, um, which is basically this crystalline substance that can give you uh, nightmares, basically. It's like this um, kind of um, rock that can possess people and whatnot, and it's interesting to see uh, where the plot takes um, the Dreamstone itself, and, um, uh, and it's also interesting uh, the plot uh, because it has a nice little thing about it where um, uh, people being uh, over overpowered by the Dreamstone and thinking it's like the most um, uh, like valuable thing ever and the most useful thing ever but in 
fact it is kind of like the enemy of this book in a way. So you've got no kind of actual kind of um, person or creature as uh, a villain. Instead you've got this um, crystalline substance um, with certain demonic powers which is a nice change um, from uh, your normal kind of Doctor Who novels um, and Doctor Who stories. Um, the characters in this uh, Doctor Who book are really good. Um, the Doctor and Sam are on par. And the kind of supporting characters, one of them called Alosi, um, A L O I S S E, is really well characterised as well. I can't remember um, too many, too much of the characters um, in this book because, again, it was a bit forgettable but kind of serviceable in a way. And uh, see, I can't remember too much about the characters, but what I do remember is that they were um, very well characterised characters and very well brought to life by Paul Leonard. Um, is there anything else I can say on Dreamstone Moon? Um, um, well, uh, it is part of a mini-arc of um, Doctor Who books in the 8th Doctor run. Uh, as you would have known, um, there is like one overriding arc um, in the um, entire kind of line of 8th Doctor books called the Faction Paradox arc. And within that arc, um, which, is very loose, which is a very loose arc, um, there were certain kind of like mini arcs within um, that main arc, such as uh, I think the Insane Doctor arc, although that might have been after um, the uh, the actual end of the Faction Paradox arc, which ended with um, the Ancestor Cell. But there was like mini arcs such as um, the Finding Sam arc, um, in which Dreamstone Moon is a part of. I would personally say that. The, um, I would say that, well, I read this book uh, without knowing anything um, about the arc previously. And I would say um, that uh, overall you don't, I wouldn't say you really need to any, read any other books uh, that are a part of that arc to actually understand this book. It's very easy to get into and you can easily latch on to what is going on in this book. Um, however, do I have any problems with this book? Um, I've got one uh, kind of general problem with this book, and is that um, it kind of feels like that um, uh, the BBC kind of had come up to Paul Leonard and said, "Hey, you need to write uh, the ending book for um, the the Finding Sam arc." So Paul Leonard was like, "Okay, yeah." So then he starts it off by like the Doctor finds Sam and uh, kind of pierces. And this kind of and this book kind of appears from there on to be kind of like a conclusion to that arc. Um, but then, uh, like part way through writing, uh, that BBC head came back to Paul and said, "Oh, this um, uh, book. Um, there's actually going to be one more book in the um, uh, Finding Sam arc, which turns out to be Seeing Eye. Um, can you like um, continue?" Uh, can you like um, continue the arc for a little bit more with this book? Um, so Paul and I did that without even kind of like rewriting it in a way, and it ends up with a book where um, it feels like that it's the end of uh, the Faction Paradox, or not the Faction Paradox arc, but the Sam arc, um, but isn't at the same time because the whole point of this book is so that the Doctor can find Sam which he does, and then he loses her right at the end of this book, in, at the end of it, which is pretty stupid and kind of means and kind of uh, gets across the feeling that this book is kind of, um, in a way, inconsequential overall. Um, but that's kind of my only real um, general negative of this book. I suppose another one is that it's a bit um, forgettable in some ways, but hang on, some Doctor Who books are like that, but it's but Dreamstone Moon is over one Doctor Who book which I would recommend uh, that you get. It's one that you wouldn't kind of like remember as being an outstanding classic or anything like that. It's just um, a nice kind of enjoyable um, kind of middle of the road uh, Doctor Who novel with some very interesting concepts in it such as the Dreamstone itself. And if you're looking for something quite uh, quick to read, um, I, I would suggest this uh, Doctor Who book. Um, because it is only 250 pages long, uh, it is pretty easy to get into, and um, and overall it's just a solid instalment to the Eighth Doctor uh, line of books from the BBC 
Um, so we're gonna overrate Dreamstone Moon. I'm gonna overrate, I'm gonna overrate Dreamstone Moon 8 Dreamstones out of 10. And, so yeah, so overall Dreamstone Moon gets 8 Dreamstones out of 8 Dreamstones out of 10. Um, this overall is a really good Doctor Who book in my personal opinion. Um, a bit forgettable, but still, in my personal opinion, this is still one Doctor Who book that I would uh, highly recommend. So, thank you for the subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Pitch Gold Black, dematerializing. <laughs>